I'm in the Fraser's West of Ninth exhibit, which is all about the storied and complex history of Louisville's West End. In this exhibit, we have a case of artifacts from the Beecher Terrace housing development, which stood just west of the Fraser from the 1940s until 2017. Many generations of people lived in Beecher Terrace, and the city of Louisville wanted to capture the memories people had of this area through projects like Lavelle White's Beecher Terrace story, and to try to find the history that people had forgotten about through an archeological excavation. In this case, we have objects related to the early history of Beecher Terrace, which was first settled right after the Civil War. One of the artifacts here certainly looks haunting. This uranium glass jar glows a very festive green under black light. This unique color is beloved by some collectors and it was very popular in the late 1800s. It gets its color and its name from the radioactive element uranium. However, uranium glass emits less radioactivity than a banana, so it would do minimal harm to come into contact with this glass. In this sense, people who worked with uranium glass were luckier than many generations of people who worked with much more toxic illuminated and green dyes in the past. Many people are familiar with the story of the Radium Girls. They worked for the U.S. Radium Corporation painting glow-in-the-dark watch faces a century ago, only to find out they were working with toxic materials after many women began to fall ill from radiation poisoning. In a loss for workers' rights, this case was overturned eight times before the company was forced to pay for forcing its employees to work with radioactive elements. This was not the first time that something like this happened. In post time, the most stylish color for clothing was the brand new shade emerald green. You could find it in clothing from shoes to gloves to dresses, like the one that stood in the same exhibit space. It was also a popular color for wallpaper, adorning the walls of Buckingham Palace and other more aspirational parlors. However, this color green did not come without a cost. The price of this shade of green, described as shimmering like a jewel by some and lurid by others, was human life. The vibrancy of this particular shade could only be achieved using arsenical dye made with the same chemical that Poe's contemporaries might have kept in their kitchens as rat poison. People became ill breathing in the air of rooms adorned with arsenical green wallpaper. This calls to mind Poe's stories like The Fall of the House of Usher, where a house becomes dangerous to the story's unnamed narrator and is a site of madness for the Usher family. Some attribute wallpaper poisoning to Napoleon's death. Women who wore green gloves might have terrible rashes on their skin. When this gallery hosted the What is a Vote Worth exhibit, we displayed a green dress dyed with this very dye, also known as Shields Green or Paris Green. But the true cost was to the workers in the factories that were producing arsenical green cloth. Many of them were falling very ill, and when the cause of their illnesses and even deaths became known, those who chose to use arsenical green items might be accused of murder. Even today, green is considered an unlucky color by some fashion designers. Some society women, shocked at the human toll that fashion was taking, began to rally for the rights of those workers. This political action in some ways brought women out of the home where they were expected to belong and into the public sphere for the first time. They hoped to bring attention to a social issue, workers' rights. Ultimately, Laws to ban this color were enacted in several countries, including fashion capital France in the 1840s. In England, arsenical dyes were regulated in 1851, but continued to be used well into the 19th century. A year before Poe's death, women rallied at Seneca Falls, New York, to begin the long process of getting the vote. You wouldn't be entirely wrong if you drew a connection between these well-to-do women agitating for better conditions for workers and the women who saw the possibilities of a life outside of the home rallying for the right to vote. So next time you hear about these spooky green dresses, you know there's more to the story.